And basically what that allows us to do is just track every single vessel um, that is the commercial or otherwise um, that is uh, in uh, that has a presence in in our, our EEZ or economic, uh, exclusive economic zone um, of Papua New Guinea. So um, it it should give all Papua New Guineans a, a, a added level of comfort that you know not only are we monitoring our ports of entry um, um, and our land borders, but we're also monitoring. You know, vessel movement within within our, our EEZ. This, of course, will allow us to to um, you know, continue to put under surveillance uh, certain ships. Uh, we are cognizant of the fact that um, when we are and and this is not um, this is not unique to Papua New Guinea, but the other 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 countries, that when we are distracted by such a such a, a a challenge of this magnitude, you know, people will tend to try and abuse the, the, the systems and take advantage of of, uh, of our, our lack of of, um, of surveillance in, in this in this area so this is a warning if any to those who, who think that they can you know uh, break protocols break our laws under these trying circumstances that we are taking every uh, reasonable step to ensure that we continue to to monitor their their business and their movements and if found to be breaking um, our laws, you know they're subject to both not only the applicable fisheries and logging and and um, and export uh, or customs and excise uh, uh, laws, but also uh, you know uh, penalties under the under the current state of emergency. Of which, as I can remind you all, for an individual, it's up to fifty thousand kina um, penalty uh, fine, or up to life imprisonment. Um, that is for an individual. For a, uh, a company that's half a million kina, fine, and of course, those who were involved in perpetrating the, the, the offence uh, up to life imprisonment as well. So.